none of it requires God as a person, but it does mm. require some sense that there's a kind of order here that one should be respecting, and the mm. order includes the feelings of the people and their relationships to one another, their histories, and so forth. You have to pay attention to all of that, and you come. To, that's how you come to an understanding of what the, yeah, let's just call it for short, the cosmic harmony requires. You have to kind of discover what the cosmic harmony requires. And it's not just that there's one big formula or something like E equals MC square, the spiritual version mm -hmm. of uh, Einstein's formula, but it's nuanced and situational. And so like much of art, you know, each thing is different, each situation is different. So you have to have an, appro an appreciation attuned to the particular situation, and that's why I often think of the analogy I've been given in prayer of an instrumental group where the, the musicians, jazz or otherwise, I've heard it in a kind of country western mode in uh, visiting Nashville, uh, but they play off each other in a way that not being a musician looks kind of amazing to me. How do they know <laughs> when it's time to come in or even to do your own riff, you know, and so on, or take, take it in a slightly different way. Some other people will then pick up on that way. Uh, that all seems amazing to me, but it's a pretty good analogy for how life really is. You got a harmony in the sense of musical quality going on, musical values being achieved, and yet it's spontaneous, it's probably so intuitive or something ingrained, practiced from being a good musician, that it would be hard even to articulate, oh, this is why I did this at this point. And you're certainly not thinking about it probably normally in advance, it just comes to you, oh, time to chime in this way, or take it off that way. And a lot of life is that paying attention to the particulars, and that itself, in the Chinese form, has a kind of aesthetic coloration. There's a slow motion film of an artist where we're watching his paintbrush, you know, and you watch them, the artist just seems to be going almost randomly, swoop, swoop, you know, stroke here, mm -hmm. stroke there. The slow motion film shows the hand, it's as if the hand is making many decisions, <laughs> going through indecision this way, mm. that way, many adjustments, and then finally, the stroke here. <laughs> and so a lot of life is like that. It's aesthetic, mm. but it's very particular, very detailed. One of the, how do you know when to speak and when to be silent, when to speak at a funeral, or whether not to speak at a funeral or a wedding or the retirement party, or you know, someone's leaving for another job. What do you say? Do you speak? Do you not speak? Uh, and all of that, uh, it's something Confucius writes about, to uh, about when you should speak about uh, the, the the way, which is the, the word the Confucians and the Taoist have in common, and it's the right way, the right flow. He said, to speak to a man who cannot, not prepared to listen about the way, is to waste words. To fail to speak to someone who is ready is to waste a man, or a person, we would say. Mm. It's to waste a person. Mm -hmm. And so anyway, all of those are, are nuanced decisions, and we learned how to do them, you know, by paying careful attention to how we're living. And we pay attention to the moon, you know, to the ideals and the sense of overall harmony and order and attunement that we want, and we pay attention to the living details as all of that unfolds.